is 8 Dixie Football Nation is back and better than ever. We've got Tony Agolini, Matt Carr, Tones Ariola, Bobby and Angelo, along with Mac McGee this fall. Dixie Football Nation heads to the gridiron, talking ACC, SEC, the Big Ten, and all the big games throughout the college football land. That's Dixie Football Nation, 8.30 Eastern, 7.30 Central, Saturday mornings on the Armchair Quarterback Show's YouTube channel going live or catch the instant replay. Good morning. It's time to wake up. Good morning. It's time to wake up. Good morning. It's time to wake up, y'all. You're listening to the Armchair Quarterback Show. We're here weekdays on CBS Radio, YouTube Live, 8 a.m. Eastern, 7 Central, 5 Pacific. The Armchair Quarterback Show, your first choice for Southern Sports Talk. Good morning, Mr. Justin Waller. Good morning. I don't know much, but I know one thing. I heard there was an all-star game, but now that it's over, baseball season begins. I can be excited again. Hi, I'm Mac McGee, and I don't know much, but I know one thing. Uh, I'm going to combine the Richard Sherman and the Jock Peterson. Jock Peterson, come through, baby. Come through. Come through, Jock Peterson. You're listening to the Armchair Quarterbacks. You're even scared to ask a girl out on a date. Why does everybody think that I'm scared of girls? Because you're a chicken. You're a chicken. Cuckoo ka cha Cuckoo ka cha yeah. What are you doing? Michael yeah. and women. A doodle doodle that's what I was just telling you. I haven't found the right girl. When I do, I will ask her out. Has anyone in this family ever even seen a chicken? I got the perfect name. That's enough. Oh, come on. I'm sure. Community Access Channel. He's the armchair quarterback. He's full of beer and he's full of snacks. He's the All-American Man. Hey, howdy, hi. Top of the morning to you. Welcome to the Armchair Quarterback Radio Show. God dog, I'm having some damn issues with the with the damn machine this morning. How are you, Mr. Justin Waller? I'm doing great, Mac. Just putting out fires and uh, it's Friday, buddy. Long You're awaited. Fires, I'm starting them over here. <laughs> I've I have fat fingered like six buttons this morning. Uh, <laughs> everything good on your end? Oh yeah, everything is great, sir. Uh, so man, so much to get into. So little time. We're about to jump into the Saints, but before we do that, the Richard Sherman video that 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 led this morning's video off. Anyone who who joined us a little late, the short of it. There's video of Sherman at his parents, or I'm sorry, his his uh, his in-laws' house outside the door. The ring video, the ring video was was leaked. No one knows how it got leaked, but one way or the other, it got leaked. And it shows him vigorously trying to get in the door, shoving it hard several times, telling someone named Ray, "Come through, come through." I don't know if that if that is his uh dad's or his uh stepfather's name i don't know who ray is but this is what was going on when the 911 call from yesterday that, that that we showed everybody this is what was going on we were wondering how the hell is he getting a domestic just uh violence charge when he hasn't harmed anybody well now you see the answer is the fact that he was trying to uh, huff and puff and blow his uh in-laws house down he will be going to in front of the judge. They said, I think it's as early as today is what they said. Um, and they'll go from there. He, he, he was released on his own recognizances uh, yesterday. No, no bail. So we'll see what happens. He is a free agent and that, and that plays a lot into this. And I know the, the number one thing is to make sure that it hit everything. He evidently needs some help, obviously. But then you, you, when you look at the big picture of this, whether or not someone will hire him again is a, is, is a huge question mark because he's an aging defensive back. I think he's like 31, 32 years old, somewhere in that neighborhood. And uh, will they take him? A ch- will anyone take a chance on him, Justin, that isn't named the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Maybe Dr. Fauci. I mean, he likes these coronavirus lockdowns. Apparently they're taking a toll. So, you know, 
can probably justify this and spin it and come out the other side. I mean, Rich Sherman would be a great Washington National, wouldn't he? <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I just it, – People need to get out of the house. They need some socializing. Uh, bottled up too much, and uh, your issues are coming to a boil. So uh, I hate to see that. But, yeah, I think it definitely explained how the charge came about. Yeah, and uh, he did he, – now, one thing to be, state, to be noted in this for people who have missed this part of the story, he was intoxicated because he, the other part of, of, of the charges is there, he was had a DUI hit and run. So I don't know if he literally ran to this residence, but he hit and ran a uh, DUI charge. So that's going to be it. The whole thing's going to be a lot to endure for anyone to hire him this year. And that's why I think we won't see Richard Sherman this year. And a defensive back in his early thirties takes a year off. We may never see him again. And it's kind of a shame for a guy who's at, who's had an outstanding career that, that, that this may be the mark that he's remembered by. So we wish him well on that. But there's so much more to get into, Justin. We can't hang on this. You know, back in the day when we was doing three-hour shows, you know, we could talk about this for 20 minutes. Yeah, but, I still want to go on a rant about, uh, come on, man, set a better example. Quit driving, folks. Quit driving. Call somebody. There's too many options to have someone pick you up. Stop it. And I don't know what he was driving, but I guarantee it was nice enough where he's not blending into the crowd. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just, just he, stop. He's not he, he he's not doing what like you know. In other words, if if I hit and ran somebody, I've got a much better chance of getting away with it because I got an old beater pickup truck there. I was like, I don't know, some ugly ass damn thing. We I, I think it was a Ford, but I'm not sure what it was. Uglier than hell. You know, Richard Sherman's hitting you with like probably like a Maserati or something. It was like. I had gold Maserati in my head. Exactly. And, That's and, and you know, Richard Sherman, he's probably got uh, vanity plates on the back knowing him. It's, yeah, it's something to the effect of Sherman was here. I think now it'll be like come through, but uh, <laughs> you know, damn good. Well, man. So uh, 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 you, you're not going to get in this day and age with video everywhere. You're just not going to go away, get away with anything, anything. Now, putting that aside, and we're going to try to get into some golf here in a second. There's so much going on. The Atlanta Braves made kind of a splashy move yesterday. And I know Jock Peterson is not Ronald Coon Jr. He's not, he's never going to be confused with him, but the guy has been clutch in his major league baseball career. And he's hit lefties better than everyone thought he was going to this year. They said this year, in this first half alone with the Chicago Cubs, he has faced more left-handed pitching than he did the previous five or six years that, that he spent with the LA Dodgers. The Dodgers always just had him facing righties. Evidently he's, he's, Oh, he's decent at facing lefties. I think the Braves will probably platoon him, but at least we know you can put him in there. He's got a good arm. Once again, I'm not trying to confuse him with Ronald Cunha Jr. That, that's a once-in-a-lifetime kind of talent that Atlanta has. But he's a serviceable guy, Justin. I also feel like this gives you a shot in the arm going into this big series. And I laid it out in Braves country this morning, which will be up shortly after this show. But, dude, the stretch that the Atlanta Braves is about to go on before they get to the All-Star break. It's the Rays here for three. Then they got the Padres, then they've got the Phillies, and then they play the New York Mets for five before they get to the trading deadline. And oh, by the way, you've got the Brewers looming right there as well. Right. So that's going to uh that's going to define their season the next two weeks. I don't think they'll they'll make another major move until the trading deadline. Because I think they're going to basically say, look, we tried to get you something. Y'all prove that y'all are, that y'all are capable to go out there and stand toe to toe with the Mets. And I, and I honestly, just, I think going 500 would, would suffice. I think if you, if you go 500, <clears throat> excuse me, of course we haven't gone 500 yet, but if you, <laughs> if you go 500 over the next, uh, 12 ish games, right before the trading deadline. 
you're going to be, you're going to be right there in the fight. And at that point, they may make a major move. They may bring in a closer. They may bring another bat in that I, def- I think they desperately need in the outfield. One way or the other, it's a center fielder or a left fielder. They need a bat. Um, what do you see big picture on this? And I feel like I'm just doom and gloom today. I- I'm not liking any of the moves. I mean, I feel like this is a – I go back preseason. I'm still upset about the Azuna um, oh. signing, and we rumored about – Peterson there. I mean, look at your outfit. You, you don't have Acuna. You don't have Azunia. And you've got an expensive gold glover that can't hit his way out of a wet paper bag in, in Ciarte. So um, one of the best talented outfits if you could get them out there on the field, but uh, just didn't happen this season. And uh, a lot of armchair quarterback in this morning, pun intended. And uh, you still want Peterson to begin with or re-sign Duvall, which is what I've screamed this entire offseason. So Anyway, I'm just bummed out on it. I'm Nancy. I'm going to move on because I can't be unpissed off about it. Well, look, he's hitting 230, which honestly, sadly enough, that's about league average nowadays. I know that's pathetic, but that's what it is. He's got 11 home runs, 30, uh, 39 RBIs. And, you know, the other big advantage to this, I think, might have slipped under the radar for a lot of folks. The reason why the Braves went after him, the reason why it was, it was so uh, enticing so he's owed $2 million this year. Next year, and though it was reported as a one-year deal when he was signed with the Cubs, evidently this there, there's a mutual club option. So in other words, if the Braves want to bring him back and he wants to be back, they can bring him back for it. was It's right around the $10 million range. There's different reports that are arguing back and forth, right? But basically about $10 million. If they decide they don't want to bring him back, they have to pay out two point five. And so unless it was just a terrible injury, I would think they would probably bring him back for next year. So even when Acuna does come back if to sit in right field, you put him in left because I don't know what the hell is going to happen with Ozuna. But if Ozuna, if they do ever get uh, get him back and ever bring him back, he's going to DH. So uh, this is a big deal across the board for Atlanta. Maybe they don't make the playoffs this year. Maybe they don't, you know, make that kind of special run. Maybe they never make another big move this year, but this could help for next year as well. I definitely think it helps for next year. And again, when I think Peterson, the first thing that comes to my mind is just clutch hits in big moments, especially postseason. Um, and and that's what you want. You 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 you've missed a Marcakis on this roster, the bat that you knew no matter what, gonna make contact, gonna put the ball in play. Might be an out, but he's going to fight it off. He's going to give you something. He's going to fight through and eat some pitches. And uh, Peterson coming up clutch is one of the big things that, uh, especially that game five home run in the World Series against the race. Uh, there's been a few of them over the years, but uh, big clutch moments stand out for me and Peterson. And his his OPS uh, this year is 718. You don't like that. That's not what you typically want. For someone to be considered a power hitter, you want him 900, but you can live with around 800. So hopefully he gets more to where he was last year or actually the year before. Uh, I guess going back to, um, I guess his last solid year offensively would be considered 2019 because it was such a small sample size uh, last year. Last year, he only played 43 games. So it's hard to, to but, but if you go back to 2019, He's an 876 OPS, a 600 sluggo. Um, you you can live with that. I mean, that's a decent – that's a guy you can put – I would still say he won't be – I think they'll put him in between Ozzy and Riley versus right Riley pitchers. That would be my guess because then that's going to make it where Ozzy uh, – they might leave Ozzy – down at the four hole, but I would think it would go uh, who, who, whoever you have leading off, whether it's Almonte or Heredi or whatever, and then Freddie, and then most likely you could either go Peterson, Ozzy, or Ozzy and Peterson, and then Riley hitting fifth would be my guess is how they would go with that. With versus left handed pitchers, he's either going to be much farther down in the lineup or they will give him the day off, which we'll find out really soon because uh, I, I think it's Sunday's starter for Tampa is uh, Rich Hill. So that's going to be your first, you know, are they, or aren't they going to start him? The, n- not to that, that stretch before for Atlanta, before we move on, 
they don't get a day off till August 2nd starting today, unless there's a weird rain. Out. They don't get a day off till August 2nd. That's going to take a toll on that terrible bullpen. So I'm hoping if they do get aggressive, they make the move before the five game series versus the Mets as far as bullpen goes, because they're just going to need bodies at that point. Every one of their opponents are either in second or first place in their respective divisions I mean, that's over awful. this stretch run. I mean, it's nothing more than that. Just the one and two stacked across the, you know, East yeah, Central. Let's not overreact. I mean, we're only the three-time defending champion. Don't worry about it. We'll, we'll figure something out. Ah, Doug Peterson can pitch. I mean, come on. We're fine. We're playing the Rays tonight. We'll be fine. The Mets play the Pirates. can't even hit. The Mets are playing the Pirates, but we're playing the Rays. We'll be fine. I did. I, I did look at the Mets' schedule going forward. They do have a tough road a, after this weekend, so they don't necessarily get. They're not exactly going to be on easy street while Atlanta's playing all, all the tough teams. Okay, let's go ahead and dive into the uh, the New Orleans Saints. Is they going to be eating them W's this year, man? Uh, did you log on in time to see the video with, with Jameis doing his doing his poetry or whatever the hell that was? No, I did not. <laughs> gotta go back and watch this he's in a freak he, he, he's in a is when he was in tampa and he's in a pre-game huddle it looks like it was in the locker room and he's got this long winded rhyme slash poem trying to get his team jacked up and at the end it's 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 spliced up where you see uh fitzpatrick sitting next to him he goes that's a little long <laughs> and then he and then he was really nice he goes he goes i liked it but you know it was a little long. <laughs> I would say this was probably like one of his very first years in in Tampa because yeah, because you know when he when he was younger he was trying to get everyone's. I, it'll be interesting to see to me what kind of a leader he is this year compared to where he was in Tampa because I think he was always trying to prove himself and now that he's had a year to sit behind Breeze to listen to Peyton to. He's also much older now. What has he got to be? I don't have it in front of me, but I'm guessing around 27, 28 years old because he was national championship was 2013. That was eight years ago. And he was around 19 at that time, I believe. So that takes, he, he, he's got to be around 27, 28. Um, I would think there would be a little more of a leadership involved too. And it's also good for him that he sat for a year, got to know his teammates and is not coming in. Like, let's say he re, he resigned somewhere, Justin. He went walking into. We'll just say the Panthers, like, like the Panthers never took their, uh, you, you know, made their trade for Darnold, and he walked in this year. I think he's the kind of kid that would be worried too much about us, everyone going to accept him. He should be ready to roll, and I do believe he's the quarterback. I think Taysom Hill is going to be what he's always been, which is that pain in the ass you have to game plan for, but you're not going to see him more than about five to ten plays a game. Well, we do know that he had his Lasix, so we know that he can distinguish between the jersey colors now, so he should have more touchdowns and interceptions. So if all that is true, uh, should be a good season. They've got a brutal schedule. It's, it's going to be fun to watch. I think it's going to be exciting. Uh, it's going to be very entertaining, especially with that offense and the, the, you know, the weapon players that they're, they're going to be bringing back. It's, it's going to be something to watch because we know Jameis has no problem airing the ball out. Question is, <laughs> which which team catches it there so there's only three preseason games this year right and the first one's at baltimore i don't expect a whole lot of play there the second one's against jacksonville and i believe the number two game is going to turn into what used to be the number three game which would be most of your starters will 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 play at least a half in that in that game the third game uh is august 28th against arizona that's a little less or, or that's right at two weeks before kickoff of the regular season. And I would tend to think that most teams aren't going to play a lot of starters. If they do, it's not for very long. Um, from a, f from a quick fantasy standpoint, Jameis Winston's the quarterback. Does that make you more likely or less likely to draft guys like Kamara and uh, uh, Oh, I'm blanking number 13. Thomas. Thomas, yeah, M Michael Thomas. Um, is are you more likely or less likely to 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 draft these guys? Well, I believe uh, 
didn't I get Michael Thomas to have some big draft trade with you last year and that burnt me? I didn't get to play him at all or something along those lines. I don't know. I'm burnt on Michael Thomas, yeah, but you uh, someone I, I don't remember what happened. You, you traded me someone that had like bone cancer or something. I don't remember what the hell happened, but I was. <laughs> I think we're, our we're, trades suck, by the way. Our trades absolutely suck. If they're going to make a trade with you. I, I, I never see that player play again. It's instant IR um, when me and you trade. It's a death sentence to both players. So, um, it, I don't know. I'm a little gun shy on the off at Kamara. I have no problem. I think he's going to be an intricate part, whether that's uh, catching or, or running or rushing or receiving out of the backfield. I, I have no doubt he's going to get his. Thomas, I might uh, probably going to take a couple notches down in my wide receiver rankings. I'm, I'm really probably going to scale that back a little bit, especially when I take last year into consideration. I'm, a, you know, I'm on the I'm on the fence with that one because Winston always put up good fantasy numbers, and if he is throwing interceptions, I don't really want Winston as my quarterback because I do believe that Peyton's going to reel him in a lot. But if you remember, Winston always, always like focused on like the best receiver on the field, right? And he would like lock into him. So I'm kind of on the fence about man, Michael Thomas might might have a resurgence this year. But I get what you're saying too with the injury and whatnot. And then also, will they take the ball out of his hand? Because if, if Sean Payton's involved, he might find more ways to move the ball on the ground, right? Um with Taysom Hill, with Kamara. Kamara is interesting because that 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 uh, article that I sent you, yet or picture that I sent you yesterday, it was tied to an article. You got the top five running backs in the National Football League. Derrick Henry, this was the ranking. Derrick Henry won Kamara, Dalvin Cook, Chubb, and then Christian McCaffrey at number five. And most of the responses I saw to everyone was like, that's about right. I'm like, Y'all have forgotten how damn good Christian McCaffrey was. Before. That's my that's my thing. McCaffrey at a number five is a slight right there. I mean, it's two three for me. Um, I can't take the goggles off. Number one stands where he is until you dethrone the king. He's right there. Um, we can talk about McCaffrey and Kamara, but I don't have Cook and Chubb above McCaffrey. So I'm glad you had the same stance as me on that one. Well, you can't. The thing about McCaffrey is. Fantasy wise, he's still going number one, and it's not even close. Right. I I, I did one uh, mock draft earlier this week, and he he was. And I was looking at the rankings. I just want to know what I'm talking about when I when I see these things. He, I mean, he's going number one, and it's. I mean, it's not even close. And then I think talent wise, the best running back of the National Football League very well could be Alvin Kamara. We just will never know because they won't overuse him. They will, they're very, and, and for good reason, but they don't run him into the ground. They will run Derrick Henry in the ground. They will run cook in the ground. Uh, Chubb is, is a hard one to, I, I think Chubb's very good. I just don't think he has the talent that the other guys do. I think he's great fantasy. I, I would love to have him on any team of mine, but I'm not taking him talent wise over those other four guys. I'm just not, if I was going to rank these guys, if we're talking fantasy, it's a totally different argument. If you're talking about like the best running backs in the National Football League, I still have to put CMC one. I think I go Derrick Henry because of his size. If not, it's Alvin Kamara. Uh, I do like the fact that Alvin Kamara is so dangerous out of the backfield. So it's total package. It's probably for me, it's CMC, Alvin Kamara, Derrick Henry, then Dalvin Cook, and then uh, Chubb. And the problem with Cook is as good as he is. He Look, he, he gets injured too. He does. I mean, the guy has been known to get banged up before we run out of here real quick. Cause uh, we're running out of time. Um, we don't have a chance to go into the entire schedule, but I do know this, the over under is nine and a half on, on the saints win out in Vegas this year. Would you take the over or you take the under on the nine and a half wins under really? Okay. Yeah, I do. I mean, they just, they've got some heavy hitters. You got green Bay. You're not only your division with Carolina and Tampa Bay. I'm not writing off Atlanta, yeah, but uh, I think that offense is going to take a step back um, just a little bit. Um, I say that, but uh, they'll come in and we'll watch Arthur Smith do magic with tight ends all over again, and a rookie will dominate the NFL. So that being said, it, it's a tough slate, but you're out. You, you've got Green Bay, you got the Seahawks. Um, 
Titans in that mix, Buffalo. There's a lot of contenders that are up and down this schedule. I think it's going to be very hard for them to roll through and uh, do that, unless there's just something they've got schemed up. And like we said, Jameis comes out and has just reinvented his style and is now that elite pocket passer sitting back there behind Breeze, then I don't see that they do it. Do you? There's 17 games, so if they go nine and eight is, is what we're talking about, nine and eight or worse. I I just have more faith in Sean Payton. Um, if it was 16 games, you'd have me right there, right there going. I, I could see him go nine. So I think that the thing is, as many tough games as they have, I think they have a lot of winnable games. Um, but, man, it it really comes down to number two for the Saints because of Jameis Winston – comes out like gangbusters this could be a dangerous team but if Jameis winston didn't learn anything over the last calendar year then this team is uh, then you're probably right this team's probably eight and nine i mean they could be worse they, they could be seven and ten but for every road game against the patriots they also have games against the jets right so it's just i'm not so much worried about the offenses can the defense shut down some of these offenses they're they're going to be tangled with and can they keep it to where a solid defense i will say this peyton's usually pretty good about when he knows that he's a little crippled at the quarterback position like with freddie bridge uh teddy bridgewater he played a really conservative style of offense that kept his defense fresh and uh as much as it might be important for winston to do well it's also gonna be very important for a for kamar to stay healthy because that dude gets hurt, then I don't know what you lean on. Because you can't have Taysom Hill back there in the backfield unless you come up with a lot of weird trick plays. What's your walk-off for the day? Uh, baseball back this weekend. Second half, time to make the moves. Everybody have a great weekend. Be safe. Don't drink and drive. See you on Monday. All right, brother. We will see you on the flip side. And uh, we'll be back in a flash here on the Armchair Quarterbacks. Matt Carr, we're going to talk a little bit of Saints, and we're going to talk about the NBA playoffs and there's some rumor mills hitting hitting the scene we'll be back in a flash oh that's hippie talk you're listening to the armchair quarterback show we're here weekdays drive time find the armchair quarterback show on facebook today Put your flag in the dirt. <laughs> Hello, welcome to the Armchair Quarterbacks. Uh, I just, just uh, wanted to chime in on all those uh, SEC wannabes. Uh, <laughs> yes! <laughs> if Alabama was playing cancer, I would cheer for cancer. Armchair Quarterback Radio, your home for the SEC. Back third down on the eight, in trouble. Got a block behind him, then a throw and a run, complete to the 25, to the 30. Lindsey Scott, 35, 41. Lindsey, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Lindsey Scott, Lindsey Scott, Lindsey Scott. Second down from the three. Comes the blitz, quick flip, caught. Did he hold it long enough? The official says yes. Oh boy, is that going to be controversial. Daphne the freshman. My goodness. If he had it, he didn't have it very long, that's for sure. And this one's in the history books. And inexplicably, the Florida Gators go 91 yards to come from behind and edge the Tennessee Volunteers in an ending that will be talked about for years. SEC! 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 I'm chair. I dare you to take a little pain. You're not going to die because you're feeling a little pain. At the end of pain is success. Pain is temporary, but eventually it will subside and something else will take its place. If I quit, however, it will last forever. On the other side of that pain is your promise. I'm chair. It all starts with just one thing. When recycling, rinse out jars and cans and avoid recycling wax paper or paper soiled with food. This will reduce recycling contamination. Find tips and more at OneThingUS.com. What's your one thing? I'm sure. Community Access Channel. It's like people only do things because they get paid. And that's just really sad. Look, 
You can stay here in the big leagues and play by the rules, or you can go back to the farm club and roar. It's your choice. Yes, and it's the choice of a new generation. <laughs> By the Delta variant. (laughs) It's Friday, baby. You know what that means? You got to find a way to get out of work early today. (laughs) What story will they believe this time? You know, you never have to take off early on a Wednesday. It's always. <laughs> <laughs> my, my toe always hurts on Friday about three. <laughs> Look, man, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to leave early and I may be a little late on Monday. Okay. <laughs> That's going to be an issue. Save my employee of the month parking spot, please. Yeah. <laughs> Don't make me cancel culture you on, on, on Facebook. I'll go right to your Facebook page. Wow. How, are <laughs> How are you, sir? Doing good, man. Uh, getting ready to head on a little vacation next week. So this is uh, my last day of work for about 10 days. Will anyone notice? No, they don't even know I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't even know they hired you. <laughs> You're like Kramer. <laughs> I'm like uh, George. I just keep going up in this little hidden office. <laughs> I was thinking more like Kramer because <laughs> your fire. Oh, yeah. Well, I you never even hired me. <laughs> When he has his little briefcase of crackers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I actually watched quite a bit of Seinfeld over the last couple of days with, with no sports being on. Uh, I watched quite a bit of it yesterday. I watched a lot because I, I was expecting Yankees uh, Red Sox to be back. And then I was like, uh, here we go again, man. Here we go again. These guys who are jabbed are, are, are getting quarantined and protocoled. What the hell kind of, it's just, it's beyond stupid at this point. Um, but real quick before we jump into the NBA, over under nine and a half wins on the on the Saints. We were just talking about this on the other side of the hour. Um, what say you? That's a tough division, man. And so we don't still know who the quarterback is. I'm guessing, right? They still haven't named they haven't named Winston. I would assume. I I would be shocked if it's not Winston because Taysom Hill's not really a starter. You know, he's more- I mean, but didn't he won like four or five games for him last year, nine and a half wins or seventeen game season now. Yeah, I'll take the over on that. That's that's what I'm thinking is that but the problem is okay, so you gotta find ten wins. That first game is at home against the Packers. Well, what if Aaron Rodgers doesn't play, right? Uh, even if he does play, is he, is he all in? So I think they've got a decent chance to win those first two games because you got the Panthers. Yeah. It's on the road, but Sam Darnold going into a new regime, a new team that there's going to be a learning curve. I do, by the way, believe Sam Darnold's going to have a decent, uh, career in, in Carolina may not show, show up the first few weeks. But I think what they what they have proven that, that they've done in their college coaching career with Rule and Brady, I think they can do some things with Darnold. So don't give up on him yet is all I'm saying. But then they're at the Patriots. That if you still got Cam Newton there, Matt, I mean, would you bet on the Patriots to beat the Saints? I wouldn't. Not, no, if, but- not if Cam Newton's there. So that has that has you maybe a two and one start, maybe even a three, a lucky three and zero. Oh. And if you know if it all goes right, you could go four though, because you get the Giants at home after that. Right. Now, I, I do think Washington's going to be really good, and uh, I don't think I do, too, I do too. And I hate saying that. Like, I, don't, I don't hate a lot of NFL teams. I just I, the Redskins is not. It's I just cannot stand them. But they're I think they are back, baby? Question mark. <laughs> I think the signing of, of Fitzpatrick is extremely underrated. I really do. Of all the things that happened in the offseason, was like, oh, okay, yeah, Fitzpatrick went. Dude, the, you just gave one of the best, if not the best, defenses in the National Football League for right. one year, a very savvy veteran quarterback. So he right. he is uh, Alex Smith 2.0, right? Yeah, so, and that, that defense, you said if they're not the best, they are. I think they are the best. If Tampa's right there behind them or close. Yeah, it, it's really close. When I think of the top defenses in the National Football League, it's Washington, it's Pittsburgh, 
It's uh, Tampa, how they played down the stretch. Now, Tampa's going to have to prove that during the regular season. They right. really got hot towards the end, and they should because they're bringing the entire team back. But we'll see if they've got that fire, that motivation. And, um, and Brady keeps them fired up, man. I I'm, cannot wait for NFL to see this. I'm, I'm very much, it's a lot of good storylines this year. And evidently, Brady will, will uh, attempt his second year in Tampa to play on something uh, called Two Legs. Did you see this report where he evidently tore his MCL in New England and he played on it all year long and he just had surgery in February? When they said he had surgery in February, no one knew it was a torn MCL. Nobody yeah. knew. And he's like, I'd be fine. <laughs> because he, he, he runs about the same 40 with a torn MCL. <laughs> I know, but man, you talk about some pain that he must have been dealing with. That just adds to his legend. It really TB12, TB12, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it just absolutely adds to his legend. When they go to Washington and Seattle back to back, that's going to be tough at home against the Bucks, and then home against the Falcons by midway through the season. We'll see if, if the Falcons are a dangerous team or not. I think they could be, um, but my biggest question mark with the Falcons is how are they going to stop people from scoring? But I think they're going to be fine without Julio Jones. I really do. They've got a good receiving core. And then you add uh, Pitts to, to the mix at tight end. And honestly, Mike Davis is, is a solid running back. I, I think they're going to put points. Up. Then they're going to go to Tennessee, go to the Eagles, at home against the Bills, at home against the Cowboys, at the Jets. I mean, I can see 10 wins in this team, maybe even 11. 12, I mean, it's not 13 if things go really well. I think I think Tampa will. I think I think it's going to be a rematch Super Bowl, Tampa Kansas City. That's why I'm calling that shot early. But I also think they split the season with New Orleans. So I think they get New Orleans. They'll get one one win there. Yeah, those are the heavy favorites right now. If if you look at the books in uh, in Vegas, uh, I guarantee you all all your preseason prognosticators are are calling for that right now. It's. I mean, how do you not? How do you not? You can't, you're not betting against Brady. You're not betting against Mahomes. It's the it's the easy chalk pick too, right? So that even if you look, even if you're wrong, you can say, but 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 you know. So I that won't be my pick, but I can guarantee you, I'll I'll have them both in the playoffs, and so we'll just see what happens with that. I think it's too difficult to get both teams to come back to the Super Bowl. Did you read the? Or did you watch a little uh, Mike Greenberg talking about Tannehill the other day? No. He was talking about how he, how underrated, how like under, or overlooked he has been over the last year and a half. It was, it was pretty good little watch just because he actually had Danny Hill's back. <laughs> I have to take, of, I gotta have to take everything from a Jets fan with a grain of salt. <laughs> I mean, but it was serious. I mean, I get what you're saying, but it was like they were, they were. He was just giving all the stats and just it was. He actually had Tan Hill's back, and when he's been seeing the same thing we've seen up here the last year and a half in Nashville, it's just called he finally got his head out of his ass. Is I mean, I'm sorry, but that's what it is because anyone who's followed the National Football League for the last three, four years knows Tannehill came onto the scene what about three years ago for the Titans and right. has played really well, but he lives in a vacuum in Bristol, Connecticut, where the, what, what do they talk about every day, which is what he's preparing for. Right. Cause so, so he, he doesn't read or watch anything else, but what is, I, I, I bet you he can count on one hand, how many Tennessee Titan football games he's watched over the last four years. I guarantee you. Right. Right now I don't currently have it on it. Cause I've got the golf on and I got a couple other things, on. but if you, but if you look at it right now, there. Within the next 30 minute block, they're going to be talking about Aaron Rodgers, right? And then right. the season hits, it's it's Patriots this and Patriots that. And of course, now Tom Brady being in Tampa, they talk a lot of that. And that's if you look at if you look at ESPN's coverage, television coverage, they 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 follow about three or four teams every year, and that's it. And then Stephen and Le Smith, and LeBron James. Yeah, and then Stephen A. Smith will eventually come in with a, you know. Ha ha ha! The Cowboys lost take, and and they, I mean, and that's their entire shtick. When's yeah. the last time you saw a breakdown on ESPN about the Minnesota Vikings or or the uh, the Los Angeles Chargers 
or you know, I mean, they they pick the same four or five teams every single year and run with it. And that, unless that game, unless that game, unless they're on that channel that night, they, yeah, they ain't talking about them. Right, and that's why we decided to go ahead and expand the uh, Sunday morning kickoff show to you know. In years past, we've done it for an hour, and last year it was eleven to noon Eastern. So it finishes an hour before kickoff and we're still finishing an hour before kickoff, but we're going on to uh, an, an extra hour before that this year. So we're going to be doing two hours because the one complaint that I got from a lot of people was like, you know, I really wish y'all would stay on a little longer and not just talk fantasy because nobody talks about the teams from, from the South in football, you know, yeah, they're right. going to talk about Brady this year, but that's it. They're, they're not going to talk about the saints. They're not going to talk about the Panthers the Titans, the Colts, and, we, and we've got these contributors now that are actually big AFC South guys. And, you know, of course, Jacksonville is going to have a lot of intrigue with uh, your boy at the helm, Mr. Urban Meyer. I mean, this is going to be a fun couple of divisions to follow. And I, yeah. and I don't think you're going to get the coverage on any of the major networks. They're all going to do what they always do, which is let's talk about the Patriots. Let's just make sure. Let's. I'm excited to see what Jacksonville does this year, man. I've never, I've never wanted to watch a Jacksonville game, even when Tennessee's playing them. But I'll, I'll be, I have my eyes on that this year. The first hour, we're going to talk about the Patriots. We're going to complain about the Jets. Anyone else want, want to add anything? Cowboys. Make sure you talk about the Cowboys. All right, Cowboys and Tom Brady. All right. Second hour, we'll do the same thing. We're just going to do it in reverse. So it looks like we've changed it up. So it'll be a countdown. <laughs> And then our third hour for NFL countdown will be us all standing as opposed to sitting. And we'll all talk about those same four teams once again. Okay. Ready? All right. Break. Sweet. And that's it. I mean, that's it. So in a nutshell, correct. Right. Uh, so we'll move on from the national football league, the NBA. You got a game five, a really big game five tomorrow night. I believe whoever wins that most likely wins the NBA championship. Um, because if, if Phoenix finds a way to win, then that means bare minimum, they're coming home for a game seven. You're going to have to beat them on their home court. You're not. Yeah. That's what me and Bobby have been talking about a lot this week. Um, you ain't, you're not beating Phoenix. He's going from Milwaukee. I'm going for the Suns, but you're not beating Phoenix in a game of seven. I don't want the two of you talking sports when you're not on here. Okay. <laughs> It's mostly just sign language, <laughs> but no, it's been a, it's been a fun series. And like you said, if they found if they if Phoenix found a way to get, win Game Five, they found a way to lose Game Four. Get some sign language for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I I mean I I really believe that uh, whoever wins tomorrow night is probably going to be the NBA champion. Because look, yeah. if if Milwaukee goes in there and wins it. Dude, that's going to be tough for Phoenix to try to get off the mat and win a fourth, win, prevent Milwaukee from winning a fourth game in a row. And yeah. they've got to find a way to shut down Giannis by any means necessary. I don't think Giannis is your problem. I mean, just, I mean let, him, let him score 45 points. Let, just don't let Middleton score 40 points. Well, Middleton, I mean, look, what was – I'm going to pull it up real quick. But Middleton, I believe last game, yeah. He, uh, so, so Middleton last game, uh, 40 points, right? Right. And, but the thing is Middleton does, ex does as much as they want to call him Batman, he does kind of fade off and not show up sometimes. I don't know. I don't even know if you've got a Batman Robin in, in this scenario. The, the more and more I watch, I think it's the justice league. You know, they're just, <laughs> everyone's equal. You know, PJ Tucker, you get in there and, and you and you get your 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 credit too. I, I'm I'm really glad. I know you watched. I'm not sure. I'm sure you watched all all the games the other night. But when Devin Booker fouled the entire series, I, I, when Devin Booker made the that foul on Drew Holiday at the end of the game, no call. I was like, come on, Phoenix. Actually, I'm like, I'm like, I was rooting for Walkie then. I was like, that's all they're going to talk about. If Phoenix comes, if wins that game, it's be that play right there. So I'm kind of glad Milwaukee pulled that off. Well, screw you. I'm not. <laughs> I want to see Chris Paul get his championship. Chris Paul's got to show up. That's that's the thing. He was five of thirteen from the field. Chris Paul. Now he gets an extra day off, so I would think he. he I would think he's going to play well at home in front of his home crowd. 
I'm actually going to stay up late and watch this because it's on Saturday. I'm going to stay up late and watch this. I'm 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 jacked for this game. I'm 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 setting my entire Saturday uh, up to be ready for this game. What does that mean? It means I won't start pounding beers at noon. All right. Uh, <laughs> at two. All right. Two o'clock. <laughs> we'll do our we'll do our shows uh, tomorrow morning, and then usually right around twelve one o'clock, I at least crack open my first beer, and then I fiddle around the house and do a few things. And by the time the wife gets home, I'm only three or four beers into. But you know, I'm. I'm having a good time and chilling tomorrow. Not tomorrow. I'm going to make it till at least 12, 15, 12, 30 before I crack over that first beer. <laughs> hey, they'll give you a 30 minute. They'll give you a 30 minutes of freedom in that, baby. <laughs> and I might even eat something tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to be getting an invite from Facebook after hour, after dark about 11 o'clock. Like, we, so because of the kooky schedule that we've done with taking days off, et cetera, we, we haven't done the weigh-in recently. Where, where are you at on your uh, weight loss? I'm holding strong with what I weighed in at the first day. Oh, okay. I can't think of anything else. I was going to talk to you about that today because I was like, I think I was 220, got down about 215, and then just realized I really enjoy some good food. So I'm back about 230 right now. Well, it's not like you're in any kind of danger of looking like, you know, me. Uh, <laughs> um, my, my liver is on a, on a hot take with you, though. So it's going pound for pound with you. Uh, I keep trying to convince my wife. I was like, you know, if I just go on a liquid diet, I will lose a lot of weight. <laughs> She's also like, you're going to lose a lot of wife, too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. Go on Richard Sherman. Um, the... <laughs> I'm I'm at 19 right now, 19, pounds, up, which was good, but it should be better because I was at 18 pounds at the beginning of this month, and I have been doing this stupid diet where we starve ourselves from about 7 p.m. local time till about 11 a.m. to noon, depending on what time. Or 16 hours a day, we starve ourselves, and I ain't seen nothing out of this man, and I'm even exercising. And I'm like, I ain't seeing nothing out of this. So I told her I was going to give it till the end of August. If it's, I mean, until the end of July. And if it's not doing well, then I, I've got to come up with another theory. Because what is I, I would think my fat ass not eating for 16 hours a day. And it's not like I'm hogging out for the other eight hours, right? But you, you eat sensible, but <laughs> I don't see anything different. Like, I'm like, this is ridiculous. It, I'm on the, if you remember the Always Sunny season when uh, Mac got fat. Yeah, he was never he was never getting fat. He was just cultivating mass. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> that's that's more of the track I'm on. But but by the time you see me in September, I will be down probably to about two hundred pounds. That's my goal. That's thirty pounds. Two. Oh my God! I'm I'm gonna kick you square in the ding ding. If, if you're for me and you first met, I was well eating. If you're down to to. 30 pounds in September, you're getting kicked straight in the ding ding. I'm going to tell you that right now. But 201 keeps me safe. I got it. <laughs> you better not go below that 200 mark, man. Now, I'm going to start when me and Ashley, well, we've been starting to do our little nightly walks. So I'm going to start doing my, my, I'm going to get back in a running, man. I'll Every just, morning before the show on the treadmill at a pretty good uh, pace. And I starve myself. I ain't seeing nothing out of this, man. I'm getting a little pissed off. Uh, <laughs> I'm just hungry. <laughs> exactly. Maybe that's what was wrong with uh, Richard Sherman. Man. He's needed Snickers. <laughs> exactly. He had a few beers. He's like, I, yeah, I, I know y'all got Doritos in there. Come through. Come through. Uh, the other big thing before we have to jump off of here, there's heavy, heavy, heavy rumors that Ben Simmons most likely uh, is, is going to get moved. That you know, because but you remember in, in, in times past, they would say things like, uh, well, you know, he's up for, for the trade, but the team would always come back and say, We're not trading him, it would have to be blah blah blah. Now it's coming out where they're saying, Yeah, it is, it is actually gonna the be phone lines are open, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so that's big to me because but here's the thing the hell do you get for ben simmons because i think they're going to overvalue him don't you i 
Yeah, Ben Simmons is good. He, it's just, you're seeing what he did with playoffs, which is terrible. But he's not a he. If the big trade I've been seeing is him going to the Kings, I see that's kind of a fair value what they've been offering. If if that goes down, I see that be actually a fair trade. That's Which is Buddy 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 Hield and the other the rookie the guy from last year I forgot his name but they they packaged them together I could see that that would so be a place that Ben Simmons would end up at the Kings yeah yeah never, I, I mean I, I, could, I could really see that never to be heard from again never be heard from nobody watches the Kings basketball <laughs> never to be heard of again yeah he'd be that tip of the tongue guy for the rest of his year. What, what is that? What is that dude's name, man? That guy, you know, the next Shaq, the point guard, the point guard. Yeah, dude, he was in Philly and they traded him out to, to, uh, to California. And it was like Bryce Harper. No man, the basketball player guy. Uh, Oh, Philly to California. You're talking about Wilt Chamberlain. No, the other guy, he, he'll be, that'll be his entire career. But you're talking about Will Smith, the French Prince of Bel Air. Right. <laughs> no, he plays for Sacramento. Dude, Chris Weber has been, been retired for a long time. You don't know what you're talking about. He's, he's in the hall now, man. He's in the hall. Aren't we all? <laughs> I got my letter of acceptance to the basketball hall of fame the other day. Cause I had a really good, uh, I had a really good stretch in the late eighties, uh, pickup games of basketball on the West side of Jacksonville for about two and a half months. So I got inducted. I just didn't have time to get up there and actually, you know, give my speech, but you know, I, I, I appreciated the thought. Um, the, before we jump out of here though, uh, do you see the Celtics making any kind of big, Big big move. Yes, I, um, I, trade I you, or are you thinking free agent? I'm thinking trade. I think Jalen Brown's gone, man. What? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know how I feel about it, but I think I, that's all the rumor mills I've heard is Jalen Brown gone for somebody. That better be a some somebody. I mean, that's the Damian Little Little type somebody. I'm thinking. I mean, it's got to be. Look, if they got rid of him and got Damian Lillard, I could live with that. But Jalen yeah. Brown, man, I don't want to just give him up just because, oh, things aren't working. We're going to try to mix things up here, and they get a couple of pieces that are just junk. I mean, you better go get yourself a Zion Williamson, someone so, someone who, who who changes the team. Yeah, you need you need a name, man. Like, I just think Brad Stevens is good at, at, at the helm, man. I think he's going to make big moves because he's been sick of watching Danny screw him for the last seven years. You think it's more likely big guy, or do you think it's more of like a Damian Lillard type? Player? Well, I've been saying a big guy for the last seven years, so probably yeah, a big guy. <laughs> I could see it. Um, would Kawhi want to be traded there? In other words, he. he I would be. I would be happy with that. I mean, you talk about it last week. I'd be happy with that all day. He uh, he he opts back in, but wants to be traded to. Over to the Clippers and the Clippers wouldn't really get screwed out of the deal. They'd still be a really good team with a uh, PG 13 and uh, Brown going out that way. And you get Kawhi to get to mix in with, with Tatum. Cause as much as you want a big three, you really need a big two in the NBA and then a third guy who contributes. Um, and then of course, I, th I think a lot of people have forgotten the trade that the Celtics have already made to bring back uh, uh horford right so i i, I don't know man that's uh, that's an interesting it's I, gonna be a good off season like off season and then playoff basketball is the best part about nba anyway stupid, can we get this stupid thing out of the way the stupid championship so we can get so we can get to the off season the best part of the nba season is that two-week period in the off season and it used to be July 4th, and besides all this crap happening, it was always July 4th, so you couldn't wait for July 4th because that was like the, the trade deadline or the opening up a free agency or something. That's a July patriotic thing for you to say, man. <laughs> America. <laughs> <laughs> all right, it's time to turn back time get the hell on out of cheer on another great edition of the Armchair Quarterbacks radio show. Good Lord. All right. On this date in 1897, where were you? Colts, first baseman. That's right, the Colts. 
first baseman uh, Cap Cap Anson becomes the first major league player to collect 3,000 hits when he singles off of George Blackburn, the 45-year-old infielder. Historic <laughs> hit in a two-to-one loss to Baltimore at Chicago's West Side Ground. The Chicago uh, uh, soon-to-be White Sox went by the name of the Colts back then. Remember, Cap Anson at one point played for a few teams and just like they did with the Cleveland Indians, Cap Anson's team for a while that, that he played for was called the Caps. That was very popular back then. Your best player, they would end up naming the team a nickname after you. Now that was before you had apparel and all that kind of stuff and your you know logos and all that kind of junk. But that's how the Indians became the Indians because Chief Bender, one of their best players, a pitcher, who was a Native American, after, after he dominated the league for a couple of years, they just started referring to Cleveland, who at one point were called the Naps, Nap Lahoy. The Cleveland Naps turned to the Cleveland Indians. And so with the big irony about this whole thing, this cancel culture, and you can't name them the Indians, and that's an embarrassment to Native Americans. Actually, it's going to be a slap in the face to the Native American that they named the team after, essentially. Huh, yeah. That's, the, more that's you know, right. the more you know. <laughs> <laughs> Birthdays. It's your birthday today. All right, dead guy. Yes, I was Born in 1887. Died in 1951. So he's been do- dead 70 years. Many a movie, many a books have been written about this man. He, he, he was a baseball outfielder in Chicago, played in the 1917 World Series from Pickens County, South Carolina. Any idea who I'm referring to? Shoeless Joe. Shoeless Joe Jackson is correct. As the uh, as, as the famous story says, uh, he was he owned a liquor store down south. I, I want to say back in South Carolina after he'd been banned. And the famous story goes. Ty Cobb was in town for some reason and he went into the store and he saw him and, and Shoeless Joe didn't, didn't say hi or anything like that. And finally, uh, uh, Ty Cobb went over to him and said, Joe, don't you know me? Don't you want to say hi? He said, Joe, I didn't think any, any of y'all up there still wanted to talk to me down here. So it's, one of the sad things, news. yeah, it's a it's a sad thing. Uh, we'll grab on an alive guy, and since you're on here today, happy 78th birthday to Mister. He's from Port Arthur, Texas. Played for the Arkansas Razorbacks. Was a head coach for the Dallas Cowboys and Miami Dolphins, Miami Hurricanes. Who we got? Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson, 78 years old. I actually Thanks. thought he, he was a little older than that. I thought he'd be a little younger, honestly. That, that, hair, that, hair, that hair is still right, man. <laughs> His hair has been white for 50 years, so I just assume that he's <laughs> – I, th- I think they've just, you know, you know, you know purified him and uh, basically like a, uh, a mummy, mummified him, because <laughs> I feel like he looks the same he does now as he did shortly after he, he retired from the Dolphins. What's your walk-off of the day, sir? Uh, looking for the I like the the British Open is is a fun tournament, but it's my least favorite tournament just because the hours. But I'm kind of like you, man. I'm gonna t- tomorrow's gonna be a big pool day, and then get rid of myself ready for Game Five Sunday. Going to hang out with the Cooks for a little while, then uh, Monday heading down to Biloxi for a week. What? Why Biloxi? It was somewhere very. We got a very good cheap deal, and it's, it's somewhat close. So it, it, it's a good – the place we're staying at, oddly enough, is very uh, family-friendly. So, Biloxi, not far from McGee, Mississippi. Same spelling, same same family. Quite a few of – so watch your back if you end up in McGee, Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> Our hotel – we're staying at Margaritaville. Our hotel is right beside the casino, so I might get to slip off for a – if it goes to a game six you, or so. You only <laughs> – you only think that's Margaritaville. You go to McGee, Mississippi, you'll find a real Margaritaville. 
it's a meth shack, but you know, it's, it's still the same. Uh, my walk off for the day is this book right here. Fridays with red. I finally got it back in my possession. I found it on eBay and bought it. This book here made me fall in love with sports broadcasting. And uh, w- one of my favorite books of all time, Fridays with red. I can't wait to read it again. Uh, basically it is the story of a gentleman that did local Tallahassee sports radio with then retired baseball uh, Brooklyn Dodger legend, Red Barber. And Red, Red Barber is the one that basically, I mean, he basically made play by play baseball, radio baseball in the 40s and into the 50s. He made it in vogue to bake people. He, if you ask, probably 90% of the broadcasters that are now starting to retire that age, you ask them who, who was a big influence. Most of them are, are going to say red barber. He, he was in the booth when a young Vin Scully uh, started uh, doing the middle innings for the Dodgers. And he told Vin Scully wow. Time, do not be afraid to be you. And that's why we named the show on Mondays with the Yankees Rays and Red Sox. That's why we call it the Catbird Seat, because that was his his famous saying when he was with the Brooklyn Dodgers. He he would enter into the game going, and we're sitting high above the catbird seat here for the Brooklyn Dodgers baseball game. And then and then he would go into his thing. So there you have that. Enjoy game five. Hopefully we get some good weather and I can enjoy. Oh, and Timus. Uh, Timus Wooten, I'm going to see him today. He, he's uh, stopping in town with his gang. Uh, I think they're on the way home, way home to see their their parents, but or or his parents. But uh, I'm going to hang out with him, and hopefully, hopefully, we'll get a Yankees Red Sox game to to watch tonight. And right. full blown debauchery tonight, and I can't expect that uh, I my head won't be ringing tomorrow morning when I see. That, that's why you're not drinking until the game. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because uh, well, I don't know. I, I say I'm not, and then there's gonna be a hair of the dog tomorrow. Going, God, I gotta, I gotta straighten this back up. All right, brother, uh, great job, and uh, I assume we'll see you next Friday. Oh. You're in a uh, Biloxi, Mississippi prison. <laughs> or McGee, come through baby, come through. Goodbye, sweetheart. Where it's time to go. We're back tomorrow with another show. Well, unless we're fired, we'll talk to you then. Goodbye, sweetheart. Goodbye. Goodbye. Guys and gals, it's time to go. We'll see you on the next show. Same back time, same back channel. Thanks for listening to the Armchair Quarterbacks on these CBS Sports Affiliates and catching the show on YouTube Live. We're here weekdays. Find Armchair Quarterbacks on YouTube Live today. Please subscribe and share and take us everywhere you go. The Armchair Quarterbacks, your first choice for Southern Sports Talk, live from the First Coast. Gonna get another cigarette.